enjoying 31 days of Halloween so far but obviously because I've been so busy filming and editing tutorials I haven't really had a chance to make a little talking video like this which I actually enjoy because it just feels more natural when I'm doing a voiceover it sometimes gets really stressful because I have no plan on what I'm gonna say and then ugh, it just ends up a hot mess with lots of swearing so this should feel a little bit more natural because I'm just gibbering on. That being said, I thought I would do some simple effects today and that's why I don't have any foundation on my forehead if you if you clocked that it doesn't look as flowerless as the rest of my face. As I've been doing all these tutorials and a lot of them are special effects based, I realised that I've actually never brought out any like normal simple special effects tutorials before so I'm kind of going back on myself, I've already done more advanced stuff and then now I'm showing you how to do simple stuff but if I do an in detail like talk through of how to create simple effects then it's going to be a lot easier for you to watch my other tutorials and then be able to recreate them as well. So today I thought we'd create some bullet holes seeing as though that is one of I'd say one of the easiest effects to do and one of the most popular around Halloween Everyone that does zombie makeup tends to have some kind of like bullet hole wound going on and once you kind of know this technique you can apply it to any other kind of effects anyway. To create this effect I'm actually going to be using the Light Flesh Liquid Latex from Meron. I do have the white one as well and white is probably what's most common especially in like fancy dress shops and stuff. But if you can get your hands on a light flesh colour, it's actually going to make the whole process ten times easier for you, especially if you don't have any cream colour bases or anything like that. This dries to the skin colour and it kind of um, masks over the whiteness in the tissue as well. So it's just super, super easy to use, so I'll definitely suggest this latex. If you don't have this, just use the normal white one, of course but then it is going to be a little bit more work to kind of blend it in to your actual skin tone. We are going to be using latex and tissue, that's probably one of the most popular and most easy methods for effects. The mistake I think people make is using too much tissue. Um, for this whole effects, I'm literally taking one sheet, I'm going to pull it apart, rip it in half, so it's super super thin. And honestly, I probably won't even use this much. Like, I think this will even be too much. So it's literally like an eighth of a piece of tissue. Whereas a lot of people will go putting on like five, six slices of tissue on their head. And I'm like, eh, uh eh, -uh, no, don't do that. You don't need that much. And try and use tissue that doesn't have any, I was going to say embroidery. It, it doesn't have embroidery in it. It, make sure it hasn't got any like embossed patterns in it or anything like that because then it just ugh, you don't want like a gore effect with like a flower print in it so thin tissue tissue with no patterns in for this whole effect I'm going to be using this spatula tool for your latex you're going to want to put it on something that you don't mind throwing away this is just like the lid from some like q-tips or something so I've popped my latex in there and I'm going to use this spatula tool and just pop a little bit of the latex directly on the spatula and then I'm putting that straight on my head. I'm applying it in the size that I know the bullet hole will kind of be. As you can see it's quite small. I wouldn't go like really big with it because then when you're trying to blend it out you'll have all these like latex edges that are really hard to blend. I'm then taking my little piece of tissue, I'm ripping a piece off that doesn't really have like straight edges, popping that in the middle and again using my spatula tool to add more latex. I'm then adding another piece of tissue and then saturating that in the latex completely, layering up the latex. 
Now, while the latex is still wet, I'm taking this side, this kind of sharper, pointy side of the spatula, and I'm pulling open the wound. And I'm literally just pushing that tissue into the shape of a hole. Can you see? I created a little circle in the middle around the wound to make sure I've not got all this business going on and then I'm going to push the latex in towards the wound on the inside I've created the hole and then on the outside I've pushed the excess latex in towards the hole and the wound area just so there's not a lot of stuff going on around here that we're gonna have to try and blend into the skin later on once you're happy with the wound that you've created you then have to wait for it to fully dry to speed up the drying time I am going to be using a hairdryer on cool on low do not go blowing scalding hot air into your eyes and on your forehead <laughs> Now this is fully dry, I'm going to go over it with a translucent powder. This will take away the shine from the latex and it also makes it easier to put products on top of the latex, whether that be foundations, concealer, cream colours, even face paints, it just makes it easier to apply on top of the latex. I literally just kind of cake the whole thing and then just kind of dust the excess away. And can you see what I mean about using light flesh latex? This one is already, like I know it's not 100% blended into the skin, but it's already quite well camouflaged. Whereas if I'd have used a white liquid latex and white tissue, this whole thing would be like bright white now, and then it makes it harder to blend into your skin. To blend it in, I'm literally just gonna use Kat Von D Light 42 Foundation. This is super, super thick, so it will cover over the liquid latex, but also it's the foundation that I'm wearing today, so I want it all to kind of match together. On the effects itself, I'm gonna be using a brush, just so then it gets right in every little like nook and cranny. For the rest of my forehead, I'm just gonna use my Beauty Blender. For the inside of the wound, I'm gonna be using colours from this bruise wheel. I'm applying this red colour first, and then I'm applying a little bit of that darker red around the edges. Around the wound, I'm gonna add a little bit of bruising. I'm then gonna use my Beauty Blender just to kind of buff that into the skin and make it look almost like the bruising is coming from underneath the skin. And then just getting the red on a brush and just kind of patting on a bit of like irritation. I'm then going to add some of this coagulated blood into the centre of this wound. This is basically a super super thick blood gel. I'm then adding a little bit of the Meron squirt blood and this is the dark squirt blood. And then for a last kind of final touch I'm going to add the Meron spray blood. So that is pretty much it for this bullet hole tutorial. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Keep your eye out for 31 days of Halloween. There's gonna be so many more tutorials coming. And if you wanna see anything, leave a request in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.